Bex Practical Farm Research is here to help you turn your products and practices into profit. You've got questions, we've got answers. This is Ask PFR. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. How are you doing today? How are you, man? Cool. One of the questions we've gotten on Ask PFR is around tissue testing. Okay. They want to know, because now we're getting, you know, our corn's getting V6, V8, V10. So folks want to know, how do I tissue test? When should I tissue test? Where should I tissue test? And what should I know? What should I think about as I'm doing this test and I get my results back and all that? So but this is the perfect time of the year to really start talking about those things, how to tissue test, where, when. What do you, what do you think about tissue testing? I love it. I, I think it's a great tool to, you know, at the very least, it allows us to uh, kind of fact check what our soil sample data tells us, you know, throughout the season. Um, it allows us to make applications in season to see if we need to add anything, any band-aids maybe, yeah. you know, to get through the crop here. Um, then later on, you take a tissue sample and it kind of is, is the encompassing of how the crop finished. You know, so you take an ear leaf later in the season and see, you know, what was like at what maturity. So I think those are great. I'm a big believer in soil sampling and tissue sampling at the same time because, I mean, just because you have a deficiency in a plant doesn't mean you have a deficiency right. in the soil, and vice versa. There could be a reason right? why that That's, plant's not getting to what the soil has, and vice versa. Think about potassium or nitrogen, you know. If we see it when it's dry. There's plenty of it in the soil sometimes, right. because they get to the plant in mass flow, especially sure. nitrogen and sulfur. You can see deficiencies even though your soil test results right. are fine. And again, vice versa, right? right? You can see ample tissue test results, but you may be on the precipice of running out of a nutrient, or it may, you know, nitrates are a great example of that. Mm -hmm. So when you took that tissue sample, everything could be fine. A week later, just like you said, it could be completely different. Yep. And you may not catch it because you didn't have the one to fact check the other. Yep. So yep. Why don't we go out to the field and you all come with us and we're going to walk and we're going to show you what parts of the plant you should sample and maybe where in the field you should sample and then how to handle the samples after you pull them. So let's go do that right now. Give me a philosophy or a process sure. as far as what part of the plant I should sample and then what area of the field I should sample. Okay, so what I generally like to do is when it comes to the portion of the plant is I want the uppermost fully developed leaf. Okay? And how do you tell where that is? So if everyone's familiar, or I hope everyone's familiar with the, uh, the how we size plants by the collar region. So if we see the visible collar, and we can see right here, and then from there, we've got the whirl. So when I find that, I know that's the uppermost fully developed, so I just snap that guy off and I go to the next one. So if I've got, like in this case, if I want to test this area that we're seeing the potassium deficiency, I'm going to kind of stay in that general area and I'm going to grab 15, 20 samples, um, especially with leaves about this size, that's going to be more than enough, but generally we want to where we can want it up about the size of a softball. That's about the size that the uh, the lab's generally gonna want for a test. We've got areas inside the field that are a lot better. So mm -hmm. I wanna take a sample from that area as well, because I need something what I would consider good, and this area's got an issue, so I wanna use it to, uh, you know, as kind of a baseline as a reference to, to from the good to this area that we're seeing a little bit of potash show up. So we talked earlier, Jonathan, about, you know, just because you see deficiency doesn't mean the soil is deficient. So. We're going to pull soil tests here. In this case, you think these are pretty deficient soils, I think it's right? likely it probably is. In this area, and especially this part of the farm, it definitely is shown to be lower in potassium, so I would suspect that. All right, very good. What if this plant was, say, V5, less than a foot tall? What part of the plant would okay. you sample? So from a V5, so around a foot tall, I'm going to take the entire above ground portion. So I'm just going to snap that guy off or cut him off with my knife right at the ground, and I'm going to send in whole entire plants. Um, they're going to make that just one contiguous sample of that entire plant and they're going to get up some feedback in, in that in that form when it's a smaller plant. So if you have a field with the tassel and ear, um, most labs will recommend either pulling the ear leaf or the leaf opposite the ear. Now what? Well, you want to keep them cool yep. and try to you know keep them dry so you know get a brown paper bag. Yep. You know, don't, don't put them in a plastic bag, that would okay. be the worst thing that you could do. 
to them. So try to get them sent off as soon as possible. You know, don't wait right before a weekend. So that way they're not sitting in so the- So doing on a, yeah. a Sunday, you said Sunday, Sunday through Wednesday, maybe. something like that. So anyhow, but you're saying get them sent off, get them sent off pretty quickly. Yep. Let's go look at beans. All right, let's go talk about beans. Sounds good. So now we're in soybeans, right? What are we looking for as far as tissue testing this soybean plant? Well, I'm gonna grab one just so we can see. I'm gonna grab the whole plant just to bring it out. Oh, there goes data. There oh, goes data. Mark oh. they just lost. <laughs> <laughs> so generally what we're looking for with a soybean plant is the uppermost fully developed trifoliate leaf. And so if I start here, this is the upper. It's not fully developed. So I'm going right here to this second one. And it, the reason I go to that one is to, to explain what a fully developed trifoliate is, is here we've got the three leaflets. They're still rolled up and their margins are still touching. So that is not fully developed. Whereas this one here, she's fully unrolled. The leaflets no longer touch. So this is what would be considered a fully developed uppermost trifoliate. How many of those do I need to have for a sample on soybeans? You get the bag, at least fill the bag half full. Okay. Nobody's ever gotten in trouble for sending too many leaves, yep. but you you know if you don't send enough, it can affect the uh, the quality of the, of the results. Absolutely, we've done a lot of research on R2, R3, R4 fungicide applications, and R3 is that that sweet spot. You go R2, R4, that's and, R2, and there's 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 a there's a penalty, not a penalty, but not as great of a yield advantage uh, increase as if you hit R3 right on the money. So, like I said, we've got multiple years. It's a PFR proven practice to spray fungicide at R3. Uh, so critical that you really try to time that out very well. Well, everybody, this is Jim Schwartz uh, with Jason Gayheimer, Sean Nettleton, Joe Bolte, Mr. Perkins, Jonathan Perkins. Pleased to have you out here with us at our Illinois facility here in Effingham. So don't forget to like and subscribe or comment below using hashtag AskPFR. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.